Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Silver Spring Network's webinar. We're going to begin in approximately two minutes. We'll just give some time for the audience to get settled. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Silver Spring Network's webinar, Transforming the Smart City with Multi-Application Connectivity and Control. My name is Winston Lazar. I'm a product marketing associate here at Silver Spring Networks. And before we get, begin, I'd like to take a moment to review the screen in front of you and just cover a few logistical items. You'll notice that there are several windows and a menu bar at the bottom of your screen that will allow you to customize your webinar experience. You can enlarge the presentation window by clicking on the Maximize button in the upper right-hand corner of the presentation window. Also, on the left-hand side, you'll see a Resources window. This includes links to more information about Streetlight Vision, SLB6, and the SLB6 Developer Program. In addition, you'll note that you'll be able to ask questions of the presenter at any point throughout the presentation. You'll see on the left-hand side a Q&A window Feel free to use this as questions come up throughout the presentation. We'll conclude the webinar with a 10 to 15 minute Q&A segment, during which time we'll address any questions you may have had over the course of the presentation. I'll go ahead and address the most commonly asked question. Yes, the webinar will be available on demand for replay. You'll receive a link by email after today's webinar concludes. Please join me now in welcoming our featured speaker today, Christoph Orso founder of Streetlight Vision, the next generation city management platform. Thank you very much for joining us today, Christoph, and now the floor is yours. Welcome everyone in this uh, webinar. My name is Christoph Orso. I'm the founder and the general manager of Streetlight Vision, a central management software supplier, and I'm going to talk and uh, go with you through the transformation of a smart city with multiple applications or multi-application connectivity and control. Uh, let me first start with uh, uh, reminding you who Streetlight Vision is. Actually, Streetlight Vision was founded in 2006 with uh, already uh, at that time the vision to leverage Streetlight Network to build really a network platform that supports a wide range of uh, smart city applications, starting with outdoor lighting management, and control, but then extend it to extending to plenty of, uh, I mean, to the control of plenty of other smart city devices. Within uh, these last uh, eight, nine years, we developed a lot of uh, features in our, in our software, in our central management software, from asset management, inventory, scheduling, calendaring, but also collecting data from plenty of different devices and real-time control, uh, conf commissioning, configurable, and so on. Uh, 
Uh, but more important, we supported and we developed all these features to be supported on different control systems, not on only one proprietary systems, but on up to 50 uh, to control systems from 50 different vendors uh, from all around the globe. So that unique characteristic within Street Light Vision was really key for us to, um, to be selected in, uh, in more than 500 projects in 16 countries over the last uh, eight to nine years. And that was really possible thanks to our certified lighting contractors or resellers, integrators, which are um, outdoor lighting installers, maintenance companies, um, energy service companies, as well as manufacturers of devices. Anyway, our vision was really to, again, to create that um, multi-application smart city um, platform, starting with uh, smart lighting. And in May 2014, we had a great growth opportunity with this acquisition um, of Street Light Vision by Silver Spring Network. Silver Spring Network is an IPv6 mesh network company. Uh, together with, with uh, Silver Spring Network, we really could accomplish that vision to provide a smart city network or a smart city platform that can uh, uh, provide multiple applications. That's what I'm going to talk for the next uh, 30 minutes or so um, through the, the following slides. So today we have SLV6, the new version of a uh, Street Light Vision central management software. Um, it's more than an evolution with a new, just a new version. SLV6 is really a, a revolution in the smart lighting and the smart city market. The uh, SLV6 software now can control more device types, not only street lights, provide more features and address more applications uh, than any other solution on the market and obviously than the previous version of, uh, of the SLV platform. SLV6 is really positioned at the, as, a, as a city management platform and it's really the first and proven and open uh, solution on that, on that market. With SLV6, we already collect uh, data from um, hundreds of thousands of smart city devices through a variety of, of protocols, not only Silver Spring protocols, but plenty of others. And we uh, can now provide business applications for cities to not only save energy and increase control of their, over their street lights, but to do exactly the same on plenty of other devices in the, in the street. Uh, street light controllers, obviously, traffic cameras, electrical charging stations, as you can see in the screen, uh, parking kiosks and environmental sensors, for instance. Now they can be plugged in SLV6 and uh, that new version of the software can now provide ways for software developers, for smart city software developers to add their own widgets, their own apps into the SLV store. Now, providing a revolutionary city management platform requires a very flexible and open architecture while also ensuring security and scalability. This screen here um, is trying to explain how the whole system works to ensure this uh, flexibility, openness, security, and scalability. At the bottom of the screen, the three circles represent all the devices that we do control from and through the streetlight uh, the SLV6 uh, city management platform, while at the top of the screen, what we call the northbound side, uh, you have all the, um, the end user interfaces, the, uh, the web user, user interfaces or third party applications that can connect to the central management software. So let's go down to, to more details on the southbound side, so all the devices that we can support. Cities need open systems and, and networks, and not only at the central management software layer, that's what we provide with SLV6, but also at the network layer. Um, the Silver Spring citywide mesh network enables the choice of vendors and the flexibility in application, the ability to connect uh, any type of device to the, to the network. Silver Spring network is an IPv6 mesh network, which is proven. Uh, it co already controls millions of devices in various continents, in all the continents actually, and it's really an IoT, an Internet of Things uh, uh, network 
networking connectivity that allows manufacturers of street light controllers, photo cells, and other smart city devices to be controlled, uh, monitored, and commanded through the street light vision uh, central management software. So as a result, the city has really the choice of many types and models of smart uh, street light devices and don't have to depend on a single source manufacturer to, uh, to control the street light network. So the Silver Spring network is one of a network that can be controlled through the VSLV6 city management platform. But Streetlight Vision is uh, also known for being the only central management software on the market that supports multiple device types, multiple network, multiple manufacturers, actually more than 40 control system manufacturers. Some of the logos here are our partners, uh, people who are companies who are reselling the Streetlight Vision software. They are all controlled, monitored, all their devices are controlled and monitored from the SLV6 city management platform, as well as the, the Silver Spring um, based uh, devices. So companies like uh, Rongwen in China, Citilon in France, Echelon in the US, LED Roadway Lighting in Canada, Osram in Germany and actually all around the world, and Buig, who is also an international player of smart city devices, Telematics, Dazzle Tech, Philips and some others, are all systems that uh, cities can really use, deploy, control and monitor from the SLV6 software. So we've this new version of the Streetlight Vision platform uh, with SLV6, really Streetlight Vision reinforces its commitment to provide cities with an open platform that can control many different device types, but even more important, many device types from many different manufacturers around the world. A few years ago, uh, we were really focusing on smart lighting. That was the main opportunity uh, we were trying to target. Now, um, most of the smart street light projects in uh, most of the countries are not only talking about smart street lights, but really extending um, their scope to um, address more smart city applications, leveraging the, uh, the, the street light network and create a canopy, actually the ideal canopy network to connect uh, any other smart city devices, and some of them are listed in this uh, in this picture, uh, is um, getting easier and easier. SLV6, the new Streetlight Vision platform, now supports more protocols than ever to control and monitor uh, not only street lights but traffic cameras, such as CityLog's traffic camera. CityLog is a, a French supplier of traffic camera. Environmental sensors, for example, the one from Appanet, a Polish company, and the one from Orbiotica, a Spanish company. Electrical vehicle charging stations, electrical meters, water meters, like from the one from Dazzletech, for example, and, and any other smart city devices that can support one of the many protocols that we do support in SLV6. Um, manufacturers now can easily embed such protocols, for example, the Open Smart City protocol to have uh, their devices supported by SLV6 and available to cities who are using SLV6 uh, city management platform for them really to control, to monitor such devices. So it's really a, a call for manufacturers to connect to SLV6. It is now clearly and easy, clearly possible and easy to do actually. And it is easy to support all these devices, all these smart city devices thanks to this central management software, to the Streetlight Vision central management software that, uh, that is part of the SLV6 platform. Um, it really acts as um, um, an abstraction layer uh, on top of, of all these devices. Again, we support plenty of different protocols, Open Smart City Protocol, LoRa, uh, Sigfox, uh, Talk, and, and some other proprietary protocols from different manufacturers, um, so that all these devices from which are of, of various nature uh, are really handled in the same way. All the uh, data collected uh, properly, real-time control is, is enabled, scheduling, calendaring, configuration is enabled in the central management software in a kind of, of uh, 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 homogeneous way. The central management software provides not only scalability, security, uh, but it provides really a, a way to manage all these different assets with an object repository which is really open, with a data model which is really specific to Streetlight Vision and again enables this 
abstraction layer. Uh, we support plenty of different data collect mechanism uh, over all these protocols so that on the northbound side at the top of the screen we provide um, all these services so again uh, information collecting from the devices but also real-time control services calendaring services sc uh, scheduling services alarming reporting and configuration to the end user applications or to third-party software so the um, the web user interface that comes with the SLV6 city management platform uh, is 100% configurable. It's really based on role-based dashboards or desktops, exactly like on an iPhone or on, on your on your tablet. You uh, take the applications that you want from a kind of store and you organize your desktop by yourself. Each application really leverages and uses the, the SLV Northbound API. Um, so. Um, as, as part of the uh, applications that we provide uh, in SLV6, you have uh, applications such as equipment inventory, which is really the way to manage the asset, real-time control to really switch on, off, uh, dim, uh, monitor devices in, in real-time, data history to analyze uh, data from, uh, from, from the past, right, from the past days, hours, weeks, and, um, and failure tracking to analyze all the devices uh, on maps uh, for to have a, a kind of a city view of all the devices and a health check view of all of them and plenty of other applications actually uh, 20 uh, applications in total are provided as part of the slv6 uh, web user interface i'll come back on on some of them um, in a minute But on top of these 20 applications that we do provide as part of SLV6, uh, we also provide an SDK, a software development kit, to allow um, authorized or qualified software developers to develop their own widgets and their own application, put that in the SLV store, publish them in the SLV store, and enable uh, SLV users to drag and drop, drop them on their desktop, again, exactly like uh, on your smartphone or tablet. To do that, you need obviously to sign up for the, for the SLV developers program to attend the SLV developers training and so that you get the SLV software development kit and then you benefit from existing graphical components uh, that embed all the, um, the SLV Northbound API and provide you with a, a way to develop your own apps very quickly without reinventing the wheel. Uh, but not only that, actually you really benefit from all our customer base so that you can sell your applications with us to all our customers. So coming back to this view that um, uh, displays the, the whole architecture of the uh, SLV6 solution. Again, the SLV6 city management platform is really designed on a flexible, layered and open architecture. Uh, our goal is not only to enable cities to quickly save energy, increase control over their streetlight networks, but also to enable them to extend to the control of other smart city devices. And the best way to do that is not to do that alone, but to do that with on the southbound, so the, the lower layer of this, uh, of this screen, uh, to do that with partnering with plenty of, of hardware manufacturers, plenty of suppliers of smart city devices and smart streetlight devices. And on the northbound, uh, to partner with the right software developers, the one that can really add applications to the SLV6 platform, provide new innovative smart city applications within the SLV6 uh, web framework or central management software, um, applications that we will jointly sell together to all the SLV customers. So let's now take a closer look at, uh, at some of the web applications and associated benefits that we provide as part of the SLV6 um, management platform. The uh, SLV6 city management platform is designed with built-in security. Security is part of the foundation of the software. So each version of the software is really uh, penetration tested by an independent security company. And we passed all these tests, each version again passed all these tests. Access control 
is limited. It's configurable for each user group. Each group is a profile. Each profile has access to a part of the asset of the devices and uh, a subset of the actions and applications. So as a result, many cities can be web hosted within a single cloud server, which is web hosted by us or by one of our reseller or by the city himself or by a utility, for example. Uh, and everyone can, I mean, authorized people can then create accounts for their own customer on a single server. This is really a secured multi-tenant solution. The next important application in SLV6 is this asset management application. It allows authorized end users to create, to delete, to move, to, replace, to replace uh, devices to geoposition them, to record information about each asset or each object, including outdoor lighting poles, um, but also street light uh, controllers or street light cabinets, uh, EV charging stations, um, electrical meters, and plenty of other devices. So maintenance crews or installation crews can really access the application from their tablets in the field take pictures of his, of his assets, update information anytime from anywhere. Uh, custom inventory reports are then available uh, to analyze via the inventory, to analyze the assets. Multiple map source is also available to display all these assets, not only on Google Map or on Big Map, but also on the own um, city geographical information systems, for example, an, an S3 server. And all these um, attributes describing these assets or these objects, object types, are uh, fully configurable in, in SLV6. So these are some of the unique features of, of SLV6, um, of the SLV6 asset management application. Now, um, to create all these assets, obviously, there are imports available as well as uh, creating one by one on, on, the, uh, on the user interface, on the map. But even more with this, uh, with this new SLV6 version, we, uh, we also support uh, auto-installation or auto-commissioning. So the, the auto-discovery of, of devices with some of the control systems that we do support, uh, devices are automatically displayed on the map when they are installed in the, in the streets. Obviously, these devices then have GPS uh, support and they are sending their uh, unique ID directly to SLV to create that, that object and make it available in the, in the system. So once these devices are installed in the street and communicating with the SLV platform, then SLV6 automatically collects millions of data points from each of these light point controllers and other controlled devices. For street lights, for example, it uh, collects events such as lamp failures, high voltage, low voltage, high power, low power, flickering lamp, high temperature, low power factor, and many others. Again, in SLV6, all these type of information, type of events are configurable. So uh, when we have a, a new manufacturer, a new type of device that we do support in SLV6, then we just uh, add attributes to support their new uh, features. The SLV6 maintenance apps, uh, which is called failure tracking, failure analysis, then aggregate all these raw data coming from or collected from, uh, from all these devices and then provide uh, cities or maintenance companies with a status for each light point or each device, uh, a detailed health check report for each of your geographical area, but also alarm notification and other maintenance reports. So in SLV6, one of the new features is to provide a, a real city-wide view of all assets with a kind of green, red, orange type of, uh, of analysis, which is really um, uh, very useful to have a, a, a very high level view and then to drill down and uh, analyze um, a particular situation uh, in a particular area to identify them as well. So with uh, SLV6 maintenance apps, really issues are identified rapidly, automatically, and your city can uh, drastically enhance maintenance effic efficiency at a much lower cost. In addition to the, uh, to the maintenance application, SLV6 also provides a work order management system. And this one enables um, 
not only the maintenance crews to, or let's say, yeah, the maintenance team to, to, uh, to split and assign work orders to a particular crew, but it, it can also enable uh, users to notify, to notify and describe any issue in the city on devices which are controlled as well as on devices which are not controlled. Administrators can then assign these issues to the right maintenance crew and track the resolution within the SLV6 user interface. The next one is about adaptive lighting and control programs. So it's very much dedicated to smart outdoor lighting, clearly. Uh, these kind of features have always been in the SLV platform, but with SLV6, it has never been so user-friendly really, to configure uh, lighting programs, uh, dimming schedulers, uh, switch on and off uh, schedules as well, based on astronomical clock, based on fixed time, based on dynamic lighting. It has never been so easy to, to configure that in the SLV web user interface and then to assign it to a group or another group of, uh, of light points uh, on different, um, different time frame in the years with exceptions such as uh, you know, exceptional days or weeks or months or, or periods in, in general. With uh, the real-time control application, SLV6 users can control and monitor any um, street light or any smart street light, any EV charging station can read from any meter that is supported by the uh, SLV central management software or server. Right? Um, and that is uh, useful to check a situation before sending a maintenance crew on site, for example, as well as to check any situation that has been identified uh, within the, uh, the SLV6 platform. Real-time control services also provide the capabilities for central override in stormy situations, conditions, or special events, for example. It provides, and, in, and that's one of the of um, many new features of this uh, SLV6 platform, it also prov provides a way to do batch control, so to check uh, and to read uh, information from a bunch of devices, a group of devices, for example, to read the voltage in, in a whole street and, and try to identify a low voltage situation which could be a reason for lamps to be uh, to be down, for example. So that's uh, one of the uh, of a new feature of uh, of SLV6 batch real time control, as well. So as said previously, the SLV6 uh, central management software constantly collects millions of metering data and uh, other events uh, from from each of uh, smart city devices, which are which are under control. And then it can easily deliver added value reports, alarms, and other application to enable you to identify issues and make the right decision at the right time. So amongst the application that the SLV6 web user interface provide, we have this data history application that uh, enables you to look at one, two, three, and few devices and, and each of the, of the attributes of these devices and then compare them, analyze the situation in the past. We have also applications such as custom reports, canned reports that can um, show you really the, 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 uh, the voltage, the current um, on, on a group of devices. We also have scheduled reports which are uh, sent whenever you want, every day, every week, uh, which can be maintenance reports as well as energy reports for you to really have a kind of higher level view of your uh, streetlight network or your smart city uh, application. So the SLV6 keeps really the history of any collected data from any attribute of every devices and then uh, provides you with historical analysis uh, comparisons um, in, in all the, the uh, graphical components that we provide in the web user interface. So as we, we saw earlier in this presentation, SLV6 really still provides plenty of features which are dedicated to smart lighting. But one of the revolutions in, in SLV6 is that it's really a true city management platform now. As uh, shown in this, in this uh, screen, SLV6 already provides widgets and features to connect traffic cameras that count traffic and 
vehicle speed uh, on each lane for uh, on, on the street. Uh, it also provides apps to control electrical vehicle charging stations. Uh, but more importantly, SLV6 offers limitless smart city features. Manufacturers can plug their uh, any smart city device, traffic, parking, environmental sensors, and any other device into SLV6 using uh, one of the protocol that we support, for example, the Open Smart City protocol that we do support, the JSON and XML protocol, and on the on the uh, web user interface, software developers can add and develop their own application and widget to leverage all this data coming from this new Smart City app into new applications that support the city's business process. These applications that software developers would develop would be then available in, in the store. You see on that screen uh, a kind of a screenshot of a, of a store with applications and widget, a uh, store from which the end user will drag and drop applications and widget. Obviously, if he paid for that and if he's authorized to, to see and download them in his own web desktop to then uh, use them. So really by opening the user interface to software developers and Opening, opening the southbound uh, of the SLV city management platform to manufacturers, we really are enabling um, um, the, the next wave of smart city application in this industry. Um, and we are happy then to, to share that with software developers on one hand and with uh, device manufacturers on the other hand. So the SLV6 city management platform is really uh, available now for you to enter the world of uh, smart cities. Uh, since we announced it about a month ago uh, at the SALC conference in uh, Savannah in the US, we had a lot of requests from both uh, device manufacturers, smart city device manufacturers, as well as from application uh, suppliers or software developers to develop software within the SLV6 platform. We welcome even more uh, so that we can really make this uh, uh, this smart city um, uh, industry a, a real success in the next month, in the next years. So uh, you're welcome to um, to go for more information, to go for to go to www.streetlight-vision.com, and for software developers to go also to the streetlightvision.com/developer website um, to get more information about it, and then to really start working with us uh, on developing smart city applications. Thanks a lot for attending this webinar. Okay, thank you very much for that, Christoph. Um, now we're going to take about 10 to 15 minutes to do some audience Q&A. If you haven't already asked questions, uh, please go ahead and do so uh, using the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen. So our first question is, um, do you classify SLV6 as an IoT real-time machine-to-machine communication platform? And how do you see that working with enterprise uh, back office solutions? Uh, this is a question from Charles, right? Um, yes, it is definitely an IoT real-time machine-to-machine and to-end communication platform for sure, but not only that, right? Uh, real-time control, so really sending commands reading values in real time is only a, uh, I would say, a small subset of the features, an important subset of the features, but like uh, not even a tenth of the features that we have in, in the SLV platform, right? We are also collecting plenty of data and having plenty of uh, APIs to interface with, uh, with third party systems. So to answer your, the second part of your question, so how do you see that working with enterprise back office systems that the city uses today, for example, asset management. We are doing that pretty often. Actually, the, the software itself, the SLV software, provides API to do that, right? Uh, provides API as well as reports, as well as other interfaces to push data or to for asset management to come and read data or to come and create devices in SLV, right? And we do that pretty often with um, with our largest customers. Actually, we don't do it, but um, we have um, uh, integrators, like large IT companies, who are coming in and, and get trained by our team in our offices, and then they can do this piece of integration with asset management uh, 
platform. One of the examples is uh, in, in the um, Asian, Asia Pacific territory is with the city of uh, Auckland in New Zealand, Auckland Transport. They are, uh, they are using our software, but they also have an asset management um, which, uh, which they use um, across the country. And we, I mean, they have somehow integrated their asset management into, into our software. So when they install devices on the field, it's created in, inside their asset management software, and their asset management software push information, uses some of our APIs to create the device in SLD, and then everything is kind of magic, and it, it all works, right? So yes, it's an IoT real-time machine-to-machine. It's much more than that. It provides scheduling, it provides data collect, it provides reporting, um, alarming, and plenty of other things, and we have API to integrate. Thanks, Charles, for, for your question. Uh, so related related subject on the topic of APIs. Uh, by using API and SDK, is it possible to add support from an unsupported device? Yeah, that's the purpose actually of the what I called the southbound APIs inside the um, in, in the in the presentation I just made. Right. So in the southbound APIs, actually the southbound APIs is a bunch of different protocols that we do support that SLV supports, right? If I take one of them called OSC protocol, Open Smart City protocol, it's an either XML or JSON-based API that any device can integrate either in the device or, again, an integrator can make a match between a, pro a proprietary protocol that is already supported by that device, something that SLV doesn't know, and uh, make a kind of protocol translator to one of the supported protocol we have in SLB, for example, this OSC protocol, right? <clears throat> By doing that, that device can then send data to SLB6. So for example, it's a, let's say a weather station would send temperature, humidity, whatever. We would produce this data using their own proprietary protocol. We would translate that into a protocol that is supported by SLB. And all the data is then in the SLB database on the VATS um, weather station device, available in the data history application, in the alarm application, in the failure management application, real-time control application, and so on, right? So that's how we would um, support a, pro a, a device which is not supported today. Then, and that's what we did recently with uh, a traffic camera that we integrated recently, then you can also use the SLV SDK, which is really the the software development kit that enables you to, to design new screens, right? New web user interfaces. And using that SDK, then let's say it's an EV charging station and you want to have a, a nice widget which is dedicated to that particular EV charging station. Fine, you can develop it using our API. Oh, sorry, our SDK. And it's not a big deal. It's, it's really a few hours of work for, for a software developer. Okay, thanks, Christoph. And um, now similarly, uh, what is the full list of uh, supported PHY protocols available on the platform? So uh, again, on the southbound, uh, the, the main protocols that we do support are first a, a bunch of proprietary protocols, so really protocols that have been designed, invented, developed by a particular vendor of either outdoor lighting control systems or devices in general. Uh, for example, Philips, who have uh, its own XML-based protocol for their StarSense RF solution that we do support in, in SLV. Uh, for example, Echelon, who has a SOAP-based protocol that also we do also support in SLV. And there are uh, a few others like that. So that's really proprietary systems. Um, we also support um, another um, protocol which starts to be a uh, to be well known on the market called TALC, T-A-L-Q, which is really dedicated to outdoor lighting. Uh, we already are supporting free systems with, uh, with that protocol, but it's still not certified. The TALC consortium is in a certification process at the moment. And finally, the one which is the most used is this OSC protocol, so it's Open Smart City protocol. It's a much more generic one that enables us to support outdoor lighting systems as well as uh, you know, any type of, of devices, traffic camera, parking um, kiosks, uh, parking places, um, digital uh, signages, uh, weather stations, pollution sensors, and things like that. 
So that one is really the one that we uh, uh, that is used the most by uh, by by companies like Telematics, like Dazzle Tech, and, and so on. So people who are using reselling BSLV software as well. So that's I mean part of a list for the protocols we do support. Uh, so moving on to kind of a, a different topic, um, what is the largest project in which SLV uh, City Management Council is currently in place? Um, actually, the, the deployed uh, number of devices which are deployed most probably still this large project in China uh, in the city of Dongguan. It's a project that has been deployed by one of our resellers called Rongwen. Uh, they have currently 198,000 streetlights uh, on this big city. It's an 8 million inhabitant city in, in the south of, uh, of China. Um, so that's probably the, the largest, which is really fully deployed and up and running since about two years, uh, kind of. So they, they have, uh, in that city, they have a, a control center with huge screens with our software running on, on that control center. Really a nice, uh, nice demonstration, nice things to, to see. Um, so that's uh, probably the largest, but we recently announced together with Silver Spring also the, the one which will soon become the largest. It's the, uh, the project of uh, Florida Power and Lighting, Flo FPL. Florida Power and Lighting is one of the big uh, uh, electricity IOU in the U.S. for the whole of Florida. They have 500,000 light points, 510,000 light points actually. Uh, and they have started to deploy, at the moment, they have about 75,000 really fully deployed, and they are deploying really at a very fast uh, speed, uh, about uh, 5,000 per week. And, uh, yeah, I mean, end of uh, next year, there will be around 400,000 already, and uh, mid-2017, the 500,000 will be fully deployed. So that will be by far the largest project in the world. We are. We should be announcing some other big thing uh, pretty soon. So uh, related to that, there's another question that came in about um, the you know international adoption. Most most folks have noticed uh, that the adoption is primarily elsewhere um, outside of North America. But uh, besides Florida Power and Light, can you speak to some of the other interests that you've seen from the North American market? Uh, yeah, in North America, actually the, the biggest growth. At the moment, in the world, is probably North America. Uh, they was, um, I mean, for those of you who have followed a little bit the outdoor lighting market in the last, um, let's say, eight years, I see, for example, Godfrey, which is online and who knows quite well this market as well. Um, Europe has been probably, the, um, let's say, pioneering in that uh, in that field, with projects like Oslo or Dublin or Paris. Um, who have all decided to work with our with our software. There, there are plenty of other projects in, in Europe. Most of them stay pretty small, I mean pretty small, like you know, 20,000, 50,000 light points. Uh, then China uh, woke up really a, a big time with, with huge projects in China. The reason for China to wake up big time was that the price of electricity was very high and the average wattage of the lamp was really very high, so there was a lot of... Uh, of savings to do. Um, and North America is really popping up big time now uh, with uh, large deployments of LED and with a drop of the LED pricing. So yeah, Florida Power Lighting is one of the big projects, uh, but Georgia Power, with uh, Georgia State obviously, has also announced uh, a pretty large project with about 900,000 light points. Uh, recently, there was also cities like um, uh, Halifax, for example, in Canada, just to jump a little bit north. Halifax has also decided to to uh, award, I mean, to choose the uh, Silver Spring network, IPv6 mesh network, as well as the SLV software to, to control all their 53,000 light points. So clearly the momentum is on North America at the moment. Um, but not to forget them, there are also quite some decent project in the uh, in Pacific. I, mean, I was mentioning Auckland, uh, New Zealand, uh, and uh, Australia will pop up, uh, obviously, and we'll have a big project soon. 
Okay, great. So um, we did have a, a couple of questions about um, the HDK, SDK earlier, and I do want to just I want to make sure that that uh, audience is, is clear about uh, the two APIs. Um, so could you just provide an example of a southbound, uh, or sorry, a, a northbound um, API integration? Yeah, so that's a question from uh, Godfrey. So uh, southbound clear is really to interface with devices, let's say, right? So uh, hardware wise. Uh, the, the northbound APIs, actually the one which are used, um, I mean, first, above the southbound, we have this CMS, this is the SLV server, right, the central management software itself, with all the logic that it has, uh, collecting plenty millions of data, um, making plenty of reports which are obviously configurable by the end user, triggering plenty of alarms which are notified to the end user in different means. Um, and on top of that, it provides these northbound APIs to enable the end user interface or third party software to use all the features that it has. For example, to send a switch on command or to send a dimming command. For example, to read current or value or energy from something, but also to, to read a report, for example, to get a report. Tell me, SLV, please tell me uh, how many kilowatt hours I have consumed between that date, that time, and that date, that time on the whole of that territory, which is a bunch of light, maybe a thousand, ten thousand lights, right? So that would be an API, which would be a, something called get report with some parameters like starting date and date and the geographical zoom that, you know, that uh, encompasses all the, uh, all the lights that it, it contains, basically. So that's, that's a kind of a normal API is basically the, the APIs that third party software asset management, like when I was uh, answering Charles uh, on that one, um, asset management could use an, a northbound API to get information uh, from SLV. Right, so that's an example of a northbound API. Now, all these northbound API are actually used inside, inside our own web user interface. Right, so all what you see if you use SLV's user interface, web user interface, you will see plenty of features. They are already plenty of features in real-time scheduling, configuration, inventory, and so on. All the features you have have interaction with a server. All of them are using an offline API. So all what you can do in our user interface can be done also in a third-party software or system, such as an asset management system or billing system or some others. Okay, thanks, Christoph. So um, now that we're clear on some of the distinctions between the northbound API and the southbound API, um, let's just answer a general question about the developer program. So uh, is, this, is this an open, open program? Can anybody sign up and attend? Um, almost. <laughs> there is a, a step before, uh, which is to, to qualify as a, as, as a professional company in the uh, smart city world, outdoor lighting, traffic, or whatever. Uh, obviously, uh, even if we... Uh, here we are announcing a program for third-party companies or for other companies to develop applications within the SLV um, world or the SLV yeah, application CMS. It's obviously not a B2 uh, a customer to customer relationship, right, or a business to customer relationship. We are talking business to business, and, and we absolutely want to qualify the companies who will uh, who will work with us on that. But that's a very simple process. Um, it's basically an interview with uh, someone from, from Street Light Vision, discuss about the kind of application you want to develop, and then, uh, and then we start the, uh, the process, which, uh, which will then start with an NDA and then uh, attend a developer's training, one of our, our developer's training, either in Hong Kong or in Europe or in the US, in California. And, uh, and then here we go. Um, you start developing the Last step will be the, um, the check of, uh, of your application before delivering it to, to our customers. Okay, great. Well, we have uh, just time for one more question, um, and I think this is, this is an interesting one. So if a city has yet to establish any sort of city management network, uh, what's the process for launching the network or platform in the city? Uh, is it complicated, and, and how uh, is it complicated to utilize the system? So if a city has not yet, right, uh, started with a city management network, they don't have a city management network, I guess that's a, a question from uh, Michel. Um, 
then the first step is obviously to to decide which network is relevant to deploy uh, in the city. Right? Um, is it? I mean, and depending on the country, for example, uh, you may want to deploy some power line systems, which are not always that easy to deploy, but can can be um, a, a solution in some countries and in some uh, electrical network organization or a wireless mesh or wireless star network. So there are plus and minus for, for each of these networks. Um, a lot of uh, cities in North America now deploy city mesh network, as I was trying to explain earlier. Deploying a city mesh network is not a, a big deal. I mean, there are really millions of devices on such city mesh network at the moment. Silver Spring Network has deployed 22 million uh, devices uh, in, in, in five continents. So it shows that it's not so difficult to, to deploy. Um, it, it still requires some, some professionals, obviously, right? It's not a, um, I mean, it's something, it's a project, clearly. Once the, the network is deployed, then the deployment of the devices, so let's take street lights, for example, if you are in Australia, for example, you would want to deploy photocells, and these photocells would be uh, smart enough to communicate over this network, this wireless network, and then bring data back to the uh, SLV software. We have plenty of mechanism now in SLV to make it, I mean, to do what we call auto-installation, auto-commissioning, right? In other words, with minimum, um, with almost no touch from the installer, from the, the guy who is putting that photocell on the streetlight, that new smart photocell on the streetlight, without any let's say computer, smartphone, iPad, he should be able to have it in the, in the SLD CMS a few minutes later, right? And so we, this kind of no-touch in, um, installation makes it really uh, easy to deploy massively. In, at FPL, where they are deploying 5,000 per week, um, what they do is they have an iPad in the, in the uh, truck, in the maintenance truck, uh, to barcode a QR code which is on that photo cell to te take a picture of a, of a street light uh, and then they go to the next one. So what they do is, or let's say in their deployment, they've tested that on that process on the first 75,000 and they are spending three minutes per street light to deploy a new smart photo cell instead of uh, the old one. Right. So that shows that it's not so difficult to to, to deploy and then to use the software, uh, at least our software, like the VSLV software comes with a the one-day training, which is provided by, by our reseller, one-day training shows somehow that the uh, software is pretty user-friendly. Thanks, Michelle, for this okay, question. Thank you very much, Christoph. Um, and that's all the time we have now for questions. We've been grilling you for some time, so I think we'll let you go. But um, <laughs> for the audience, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we will be providing this uh, as a recorded session that you can view on demand. Um, we'll be providing a link to the, the recording through email. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and please go ahead and share that with your colleagues. Uh, we look forward to working with you on these uh, exciting Smart City initiatives. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.